Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on The Young and the Restless, Sharon gets pressed into a corner, Christine returns home to assist Daniel, and Jack delivers troubling news to Tracy. Tracy is taken aback when she discovers Deanne dragging suitcases down the stairs of the Abbott mansion and learns that Jack has asked her to leave. Tracy deems it crazy, but Jack thinks it's horrible. Tracy detected tension and dispute at the club, but believes they are going through a difficult period. They tell Tracy about tonight's major battle at the club and resume fighting, this time with Tracy in the center. She urges them not to let the words spoken in anger harm them. Jack wants an annulment, claiming she's been lying the entire time. Diane disputes it, and Tracy was present when they made commitments to love and respect one another. There must be some way to sort things out. Jack rejects and informs Diane that the corner office she sought is no longer hers. Diane departs, and Tracy yells at her brother to save his marriage. She has witnessed Jack and Diane's deep affection for one another. He labels it broken. Kyle walks in and finds out what happened. Jack believes his son should gloat, but that is not what he does. Tracy learns what Kyle has done to them. He feels they had it coming and asks his father what triggered the change in attitude. He promptly says, forget it. He maintains he doesn't care what happens to them. Tracy is stunned. She discovers Deanne fired him and Jack did nothing to prevent it. Kyle advises his father to avoid him and takes off. Jack rests his head in his palms, and Tracy embraces him. She is sorry. Though the family did not trust Diane when she first came to Jonah City, they soon realized their mistake. She begs them not to rush into anything. But Jack, with love, tells her to stay out of it. Lucy tells her father that she wants to go home. He eats his salad and mentions that she hasn't eaten. He does not want her to get unwell. She has not eaten since her mother. She wanders off. Neither can say the term death. When can they go home? Lucy wants to know. Daniel is unaware, and he does not want her to learn any facts. She hates being treated as if she were a child. Daniel can tell her one thing. He is a suspect and wants to send her to Vancouver to accompany Grandpa on tour. Lucy exclaims that she will not do it. Daniel believes things will get worse, and while he is convinced the truth will come out, he needs her to leave. They dispute back and forth until Summer arrives, and they discuss what they have been disputing. Summer takes Lucy's side. They try to persuade him that it would be best for her to hear things firsthand. If he sent her away, she'd feel as if he had abandoned her. Christine arrives at the dinner and agrees with Daniel when she learns he is sending his child on tour. Lucy says she needs a minute and then takes off. Summer wants to follow, but Daniel is unhappy that she sided with her. Summer is sad. Daniel believes his child requires a minute. Christine claims the case against Daniel isn't as poor as she feared. Not that she believes he is guilty, but Lucy will be challenged with those who believe he is a killer. It might be traumatic. Daniel will not let this happen. Summer goes outside to warn Lucy that having her around may be tougher for his father because he will be worried about her. He will not be alone. She'll be there, along with their mother. Inside, Daniel inquires about the apartment hunt, but Christine first wants to hear everything from his perspective, after which she will attempt to get him out of this situation. Diane orders and sips a drink at the athletic club. She removes her wedding rings before Kyle appears. He wants answers. Specifically, did she ever love him and dad, or were they just tools to obtain what she wanted? Diane bursts into tears as she recalls how her heart was never fuller than when she fell for Jack and her young son. Before you abandoned me, he explains. She says it's too difficult to think of. It will be her biggest regret. They discuss about work and she explains she fired him for business reasons. She still loved him. Her affection for them is genuine and has always been. Kyle believes she values her affection for her husband and children equally with her aspirations for achievement and power. She will not deny it because he has made up his mind about her. 
Sharon hugs Nick tightly outside her home. She claims she can't do it anymore. He wonders what's wrong and leads her inside. She tells him she tried but couldn't keep it up. She is a bad person who has caused pain and cannot do so any longer. Nick, perplexed, describes her as one of the most caring and sensitive persons he's ever met. He believes her problems are caused by stress. Sharon convinces herself to be strong and not tell Nick anything, then invites Nick for a cup of tea. He observes her for a while before getting tea in a greatest mom ever cup and notes she's more relaxed. She apologizes for being a burden, but Nick rejects it and wants her to talk to him. Sharon wonders if she can trust him enough to reveal what she did. He attempts to persuade her to spill it, and she claims she feels better but does not believe he should feel obligated to take care of her. She looks at the stairway and mentally calls for Cameron. When he doesn't show, she jumps up, desperate for air. Sharon and Nick arrive at the Chancellor Park viewpoint. She informs Nick that she can't breathe at home. He questions why she claimed she couldn't live with herself. She informs him that Daniel stopped by and said things she doubts he would have spoken if he wasn't grieving. It made her feel badly. They explain how Nick knew Sharon went to see Heather the night she died. Phyllis informed him. He reveals that she was in hyperdrive, scrutinizing everything because she believes Sharon killed Heather. Sharon acts as if it's hard to believe. Nick believes she's grabbing at straws. Nick believes Sharon is framing Daniel. Nick does not want this to drive her down a bad path and claims she has no evidence. She's following Sharon's lead and pursuing Daniel and Heather. It was just like Cassie, they concur. Nick claims Phyllis thought it was weird because she didn't call the cops right away after seeing Heather. Sharon shifts gears and suddenly attempts to be empathetic. Maybe she's simply trying to protect her family. Nick says he'd never do that, and neither would Sharon. He does not want this to be her demise. She does not believe it will, but she feels horrible for Daniel and Phyllis. She blames Phyllis for Daniel's visit and is anxious that she also spoke with Summer to shift suspicion from Daniel to her. She is starting to suspect she is being set up. Inside, Sharon convinces herself that she must confront Phyllis and put an end to this nightmare before it is too late. The young and the restless spoilers. Someone wanted Daniel Romilotti out of his room. According to the young and the restless spoilers, someone wanted Daniel Romilotti out of his room that night. Michael met Chance at the Geno City Athletic Club. Chance saw the phone and realized someone was meant to meet Daniel to retrieve Heather's phone. No one showed up that night, and the unexpected appearance of evidence in Daniel's room, including the phone, should have raised a red flag for Chance. His ex-girlfriend Sharon is involved, having attacked Daniel, Summer, and Heather. Why is Chance not looking harder at Sharon in the first place? Bye and R spoilers. Could Summer Newman contact Chance Chancellor? Summer Newman may be able to reach Chance. Of course, Phyllis is giving Summer ideas, and she is taking them directly to Chance. Chance, on the other hand, should be thinking clearly here. If Daniel mentions this to Phyllis, she may be able to use her computer talents to conduct her own research. Phyllis could definitely connect Sharon and Heather much faster than the cops. Someone should be tracing phone calls and texts that came into Daniel's phone and determining which cell towers they are connecting to. Why aren't the cops doing anything about this? When will someone realize that was a ruse to lure Daniel away from his apartment? So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe for more information. I'll see you guys next time.